I'm Tom from Continuity, and this is the Vintage News. It is with a heavy heart that we report today that two of the round two locations, both Los Angeles and New York City, are now officially closed. The store that inspired many vintage sellers through their YouTube channel, Round Two The Show, quietly shuttered both locations earlier this year. With their original Virginia location closing a few years ago, their Miami location closing a few years ago as well, all that remains is the New York Vintage Store, the LA Vintage Store, and their Chicago location. The reason for both these locations closing is unknown, but rumors have speculated that the intense competition in both LA and New York City made it difficult for both locations to remain profitable, and thus they had to close the locations as a business decision. Oh, groovy, smashing, yay, capitalism. <laughs> it seems that all the old Instagram pages have now begun promoting Ezzy, a live selling app, which is championed by their former employee, Austin King. Round 2 also parted ways with one of their original owners, Luke Frazier, who was one of the first three owners of the Virginia location. He has gone on to open his own store in New York City, aptly named Luke's, and we wish him the best of luck there selling vintage and new designer items. One of the other owners, Sean Weatherspoon, has continued his partnership with Adidas with mixed results. He has also begun a new NFT project called Mintage, which is a combination of mint and vintage. Without getting too into the weeds, Mintage allows members to use Ethereum to purchase digital collectibles that also have a physical vintage counterpart. And if you all tuned out after I mentioned the word NFT, I don't blame you, but it is cool that you're gonna be able to shop Sean Weatherspoon's personal vintage closet. The future of round two is unknown, but at least they were able to close without owing a bunch of people money. I can't say the same thing happened for other reselling locations across the country. Quick update, since recording this episode, it appears that round two New York City has also announced that they are shut down leaving only two round twos left in the nation. Back to you, Tom. Today's episode is brought to you by From Another. From Another is Alberta's premier spot for buying vintage, sneakers, and streetwear, both in-store and online at fromanother.ca. If you're looking to expand your wardrobe but don't want to break the bank, From Another has an extensive collection of new and used items that you can purchase. From Another also ships worldwide and express, so if you're impatient like me, you can get your order right away. Use the code VINTAGENEWS at checkout for free shipping. That's code VINTAGENEWS for free shipping at fromanother.ca. Now back to the show. Last episode, we looked at some of the crazy prices on Carhartt jackets these days. Well, another vintage trend is starting to pop off, and prices aren't too crazy yet, so get in while you can. Varsity jackets have been popping off for the last year, and we here at the Vintage News expect this spring to be the peak. Varsity jackets go all the way back to the 1930s, where they were invented by students at Ivy League prep schools. With a wool body and leather sleeves, varsity jackets were something a bit more substantial than the Letterman sweater, and were given to students who were part of the school sports teams. These were pretty prestigious jackets, and different patches and letters were given to different students and team members to celebrate their accomplishments on the field. As time went on, the varsity jacket was eventually co-opted by other universities and eventually high school sports teams as well. It wasn't until the 1980s that the varsity jacket was worn out of school and actually worn by professional sports team members and even Michael Jackson wore it in the Thriller music video. The famous satin jacket was also a take on the varsity jacket and made by professional sports teams like the Knicks and the Raiders. And by this time it was over. Everyone was wearing the varsity jacket whether you were in school, whether you were on the field, or whether you're just a cool guy in New York City. The varsity jacket has famously been worn by many celebrities including Run DMC, Pharrell, and even Princess Diana, RIP. And we here at the Vintage News believe now is the time for varsity jackets to come back into the spotlight. With Ivy Prep becoming back in vogue thanks to places like Ame Leon Door and Kith, we expect the varsity jacket, the penultimate prep item, to be very, very popular this spring. While new varsity jackets from brands like Roots, Billionaire Boys Clubs, or Stussy still remain very expensive, their vintage counterparts are comparatively very cheap. So now would be the time to buy in if you are planning on creating a big collection of expensive varsity jackets. We expect the price to creep up over the next coming months, but time will tell, so let us know what you think in the comments. Finally, we wanted to let you know about a few huge vintage events coming up. You've heard it here before, but ThriftCon will be returning to Atlanta on March 19th at the Atlanta Convention Center. Last time there was a traffic jam to get in, and even Little Yachty showed up to purchase some vintage items. Inspiration LA will be happening April 7th and 8th at the Pasadena Convention Center. 
Inspiration LA has people come from all over the world, whether to buy and or sell, and it's really the greatest place to see some of the most rare true vintage items in the world. The Baltimore Flea is hosted at the Ministry of Brewing, which is a desanctified Catholic church. And my God, is it the most picturesque vintage event that we've ever seen. Just look at these pictures. That's all for the vintage news today. If you don't want to miss the next episode, don't forget to subscribe to the From Another YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom from Continuity, signing out.